it's me, Kai Man, and it's that time again for Life Astrology. So last week, we talked about the sign of cancer. We talked about the moon, and we also talked about the fourth house. Now, um, last week in the fourth house, it was all about home and parenting. This week, we are talking about the infamous sign of Leo. We're talking about the um, planet of the sun. And for we know that it's not a planet, but in astrology is considered a planet. And we're also talking about the fifth house. This is um, Leo is one of my favorite signs. It has become one of my favorite signs. Um, Leo used to be very challenging to me. But even in this particular state, I love the aspect of challenge that they bring. Um, Leos, of course, they are from July 23rd through August 23rd. They are a fire sign. Now, see, I'm a sign of water, so kind of either water puts out fire or, you know, it's just some craziness, but it's a beautiful experience. Um, their duality is masculine. Their quadruplicity is fixed, and they are ruled by the sun. Now, anybody who knows a Leo, you know when a Leo walks into the room. A Leo walks into the room with such regality. They're such royal creatures. It's not that they're trying to do anything. That's just who they are as people. They just shine. It's like the light that comes into the room. When I'm telling you, you know a Leo. You have no other choice but to know a Leo. Anyway, let's get back to it. So, of course, again, they're ruled by the sun. Um, the parts of the body that they're ruled by is the back and the spine and the heart. Um, they're prone to getting like emotional strains and physical overexertion that are caused by back and spine ailments. Um, their polarity is the Aquarius. And the most infamous um, thing that you'll notice about um, a Leo, besides the fact of their courage and their strength, you'll know that they have a tenacious will. And so their, um, their, their key words is, I will. Now, Leos, of course, when they enter into the room, you know it. Um, Leos have this royal quality and a way of standing out in the crowd. The unique combination of the excitement that they bring or that they project, their sense of style, their way of speaking, and their laugh is what draws people to Leo and of course they're ruled by the sun so they're going to people are going to be drawn to them um, like the sun that rules Leo they are confident radiant and generous Leos are some of the most generous people they don't do it to get anything in return they are just very generous generous in everything that they do um, what I have noticed about Leos and because they have that such generosity sometimes people try to take advantage of that or They'll um, kind of over, like, extend a Leo's graciousness. But their courage and their enthusiasm lights up the lives of those around them. If you know any Leos, they are probably either actors. Um, they're also visionaries because their whole thing about Leo is they are a creative sign. They fall into that creative thing because they are of the sun, and the sun is the great creator. So... If you know a Leo, I'm telling you, if you work with them in any business, anything of that nature, they are creative, they are visionaries, they are the ones who will tell you exactly what it is that you need to do, and by golly, you should do it, because they know, they know what they are talking about. When you have an evolved Leo, they know what they're talking about, so... You know, if you have a Leo in your life, and I'm telling you, all of us need an evolved Leo in our lives, whether it's friends, a mate, um, co-workers, whatever. You need to have a Leo in your life because if you're not, if you're not one yourself, um, Leos are great in in business. They have a business sense. They have a creative sense. They have that childlike um, enthusiasm. So they have that no risk thing. So they tell you about things that will probably take you to the edge, but it'll take you over and catapult you into a different space. So get a Leo in your life. Anyway, um, Leo, again, it is the most royal sign of the zodiac. Luxury is a vital um, thing for, for, the, uh, for the sign. It's vital. They find it hard to believe ill of others. They usually, if you ask a Leo about somebody, they're going to tell you all the good qualities of, of that person. 
They're not going to tell you anything bad about that person. They won't even believe anything bad about that person until that person really have had to have done some really shady stuff to them. But for the most part, they think graciously of everyone. Now, um, being ruled by the sun, they always bring a bit of sunshine with them wherever they go. You always know that they're... Leos are the most positive people of the bunch. They're the most encouraging. They're the most supportive. They are the most, um, again, just positive people. And sometimes for some people, when you're not in that positive space or don't want to um, move yourself from a space of not being positive into a positive space, and here it is, you come across this Leo, either for you it, it seems a certain way because you want to be in this particular set of, of being instead of being in that positive space, they're going to annoy you. And it really shouldn't. They really should not annoy you. They're trying to help you move from wherever it is that you are into a higher vibration of life. And so that kind of tells you as a person who you are and what you're doing if you don't want to have positivity around you. Ooh, what does that say about you? Love you guys though. But anyway, um, <laughs> they do bring the sunshine with them wherever they go. Um, being fixed fire, Leo stimulates and causes action rather than per performing it. That's why they are able to be visionaries. Um, they tell you exactly what it is that you need to do. They're able to see things that we can't see from a broader perspective of things. So that's why it's not to them to be able to perform. Not that they're not able to perform it because they can do everything. Remember, they have that tenacious will. They can do everything. But there are some things that you are coming to them that you are wanting to do. They can tell you exactly how to do it and envision everything for you and help you to move into that space that you want to move into. Leos are amazing. Um, they love to create um, romance. Um, they cause this action. They um, love to let their hair down. They have fun and play like they are like really, they're childlike. And they love to play with children. They're not childish. Please don't get it twisted. But they have a childlike um there's something about them that says youthful with them. It really does. And it's something to be drawn to that that whole childlike characteristics of, of a Leo because it takes all of the pretenses away. So if you know a Leo and you know that about them, they love to joke, have fun. They just, they're the biggest actors. They're just the life of the party. Like, seriously. Um... Now, they are electric, of course, and everything they do, they do with flair. They are witty, vivacious, affluent talker. They are born entertainers. Their energy is just electric. I cannot extend that enough. Their energy is electric, and people just gravitate toward Leos like magnets. And now, there are some, some really great things about that when people are drawn to you in that that particular um, instant, there are also people that are drawn to you because you are a light, you know, because Scorpios, not excuse Scorpios, Scorpios but Leos are um, that, that light. They also have sometimes people who don't mean them well to be attracted to that light as well. So these are things that Leo, the evolved Leo, they understand that and they know that and they know how to move and circumvent within them in those particular areas. Um, Again, um, their energy is electric and people just gravitate to them like magnets. One of Leo's most useful assets in career is that they have an unerring instincts for getting along with people. Again, it has a lot to do with the fact that they don't really think ill of people. They always try to look at the bright side of things and they always try to look at the, the light within that person um, and look at them in a different way than most of us would be like, oh, they're shady, I'm staying away from them. But what Leos try to do is they try to find those better qualities of them so they're able to actually talk with them and have a conversation with them. Whereas we don't even want to have none of that. You know, we ain't talking to them. Leos can get to them in that particular way. Leos, I'm telling you, they bad. They bad. They bad. Get your money. Get your life. They bad. Anyway, um, <laughs> for um, one of Leos' most useful assets in career is their unerring instinct for for. For getting along with people um, they know the value of socializing and work they work better in groups 
They are usually in command. Leo's job is to fire up the creative energies, our creative energies. So this is why you want a Leo in your life. You got any questions about anything, usually, and I'm telling you, usually they know about everything. Not like the Geminis know everything. They know, Geminis know a little bit about everything. You know, Leos, these are studied people. They really look at the depths of things and look at the depths of people. So this is why they don't just look at the surface thing of people's behavior. They actually know who you are and what would best um, suit you. These are, I'm telling you, they're great people to have in your life. Have in your corner, I'm telling you. Um, they in, in Christian art, the lion, which ruled, which is the symbol for um, the Leo, in Christian art, the lion symbolizes the resurrection of Christ, um, the son of righteousness. Now, just a minute ago, I was telling you how Leos have a um, propensity to not look at people, the, the ill side of them, the, the bad side or the side that I won't say bad because that's not a good word. But they don't look at those tendencies or those underdeveloped strengths of people in such a way as to judge them. And remember, now look at this in Christian art. The lion symbolizes the res resurrection of Christ. And that is being Christ-like. So when we think about Leos and we think about, you know, the lion and what it symbolizes, we know that that symbolizes Christ resurrected into a new higher space. So... Um, I would love to really like delve into this from a Christian perspective, but I'm going to keep it light because we don't have a whole bunch of time. But um, again, in Christian art, the lion symbolizes the resurrection of Christ, the son of righteousness, a solar connection that also derives from the fact that the sun reaches full regenerative power in Leo. So that's Leo. We're going to still be tapping on this because I want y'all to really understand what Leos bring to us as a society, as a whole. These are such amazing people. They are ruled by sun, by the sun. And the sun is the I am. Those of you who grew up in church, you knew about the I am. The sun, the S-U-N. Um, the sun is the great creator. The radiant energy of self-expression. It's how we create it's how we create. The sun is how we create. I get excited about this. I'm sorry. Um, of course, it rules Leo. And the parts of the body it rules is the heart, which makes sense. The sun rules the heart. The heart of man. The heart of the sun. The heart of Leo. The heart of the world. So the sun is your identity. It's your, I your identity. The sun, the S-U-N, is your identity. The S-O-N, the son of righteousness, or the S-U-N, son of righteousness, is your identity. It's you. It's you, it's you, it's you. Can't stress that enough. It's you. The son is your identity, your individuality, your will. It is your ego and your self-awareness. The son is not who you are when you are born. Now get this. Most of us are sun signs. We know, we pretty much know what our sun sign is. We don't know pretty much all the other um, signs and houses that they're in in our natal chart. Most people don't. They just know, well, my sign is Capricorn. My sign is Leo. My sign is Scorpio. And that's pretty much it. And they think that's all that they are. When really, that's not even who they are yet. That's who they are becoming. Also with the astrology is something called a rising sign. It's where, where the sun was rising at the time of your birth. So let's say that my rising sign is Libra. So right now I act like a Libra. I am becoming a Scorpio. You know what I mean? So we'll go into that a little bit more. I got some more videos that I'll be putting out to kind of, you know, help those who have not, you know, that have not kind of studied astrology or don't know as much about astrology or whatever. Um, we'll talk about that later. So the sun is your identity. It's your individuality, your will. It is your ego and your self-awareness. The sun is not who you are when you are born. It stands for who you will become as you mature. The, the sun sign is what we're trying to mature into. Um, the sun is central to everything. The sun radiates light, life, and hope. Leo represents light, life, and hope. It's about fun, they, that childish energy, that creative nature. They are the creators. So as the sun... 
they too, this is why people are like magnets to a Leo because they're ruled by the sun and the sun is central to everything. So if we were, were to say what was in the center of all the zodiacs, Leo would be it because it would be other planets or other, excuse me, other signs that are surrounding that particular planet because, I mean, that particular sign because of their magnetism and that's because they are ruled by the sun. Now, um, the sun has been the center of worship since ancient times and that an all powerful creator linked to the sun, the S-U-N, lies at the heart, lies at the heart of many religions. Ra, the sun, was the supreme deity of the ancient Egypt, Egyptians. The sun is the gravitational center of the solar system. Gravitation, the gravitational pull, the magnetism, the gravitation towards the Leo. It can't be helped. That's all I'm saying. Um, <laughs> uh, the sun is the gravitational center of the solar system. Its gravitational pull keeps the planets in place and their orbits. They keep them in place. So this is why I'm telling you, you need to have Leo in your life. They are the visionaries, the creators. They kind of help you um, move about in life. They tell you exactly what it is that you need to do. And they help you do it. So, you know, for those people who are looking for like life coaches, transformational coaches and things of that nature, you want a person, you ask them what their sign is, you know, where, where does in the fifth house, what's, what's, what's sitting in your fifth house? Cause then, you know, if that person is going to be not only just a Leo, but how they're going to be able to help you maneuver in life. So I'm telling you guys, you if you really understood astrology, you would be able to um, more dictate your life and control the things that are happening around you. You absolutely have control over the things that are happening around you. Most people are like, well, I ain't in control. Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus don't want to take the wheel. He done took the wheel. He done showed you how to make the car. He done showed you how to drive and all that. Now, he just want to sit down and watch you do it and do it even better than what he do, did it because that's what the son said, right? Anyway, um, so I'm sorry. Go off on a tangent. I'm really passionate about this. Um, okay. In astrology, the sun is the most powerful planetary influence bestowing vitality and authority. That goes back to Leo and being ruled by the sun. They are too, because they are ruled by the sun, the most powerful. Um, they have a powerful influence over us. Um, early Christians use the image of the sun to represent Christ. I'm going to say that one more time. Early Christians use the image of the sun to represent Christ. The sun, S-U-N, of righteousness. The sun's gift of life and heat is called prana, meaning energy in Ayurveda. Um, and that particular energy is the same energy that Leos have. They have a, a particular energy that allows them to be um, youthful and have that youthful energy, that, that childlike um, preservation of energy. You know kids, kids all over the place. Having fun, creating, being imaginative, being little visionary, seeing different things. The sun. The sun is life enhancing, radiating energy and magnetism, burning with steady um, fixity, with steady fixity. Again, Leo being a fire sign because of the sun. They're hot. They're fire because of the sun. And its quadruplicity is fixed. They have a fixed nature, but the sun does too. Okay. So it just said burning with steady fixity. It gives us life, warmth, energy, and food. It is a force that sustains us on earth. In many ways, it determines how other people see you. That's so important. I'm going to tell you why that's important. You know how when we say that people hating on us because they see who we are? Half the time, you don't even know who you are. Those people are seeing the, the actual projection of who you are, are are to be before you sometimes even see it. So either they are doing one of two things. Either they're celebrating that or they're trying to quelch or stop that. We'll get into a little bit of that as well. Um, again, it's it's 
It is the force that sustains us on earth. The sun is also the most important and pervasive influence in our charts. Um, in many ways, it determines how others see you. The sun represents the core of our self-expression. Its position and chart at the time of our birth is usually all that many people um, consider. This position reveals how our light shines, how we um, seek to project ourselves upon and influence our family, our friends, and society. Um, the sun is how we create, not only artistically, but also in terms of having fun. And your birth chart, it governs your individuality, your distinctive style, and your drive to fulfill life goals. It's the role in your grand drama. This is the act. You are the play. So it's your role in how you act. Um, within this particular place, it is the painting of your um, of you, but the other signs and different placements of our houses um, are the early lines drawn that really make you who you are. So let's just say this: um, the sun sign or sun sign is really who it is that we are becoming. Um, the other the other signs that we have in certain houses, you know, if you have a canvas and it's blank. Those signs would be the drawings before the actual finished piece of the the chart or or the painting, and the sun sign is what actually what what we'll see in the end. It's not all those different signs that are kind of the lines drawing for the painting, but it's the finished product. The sun sign is the finished product. So a lot of times when you're walking around here, unless you you know have evolved or your work continuously working to learn more about yourself and who you are and things of that nature you're not really your sun sign you're maturing into becoming that 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 person or that being or that in that energy so um it's the role in your grand drama it is the painting of you but the other signs in different placements or houses in your chart um, are the early lines drawn that really make you who you are. The sun is the finished product. That's why it's your I am. I am whatever that is. I am, you know, you complete that. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to talk about is the fifth house. Now, the fifth house is the house of creativity and sex. Creativity, Leos are creators. The sun is the great creator. So, of course, it's going to be sitting in the fifth house, which is the house of create creativity. Here we go spitting again. I'm not shutting this video off. We're going to do this and get it done. Um, it's the house of creativity and sex. Um, the natural sign is Leo. It's ruled by the sun. It symbolizes self-expression. Of course, it symbolizes self-expression because it's how we create um, being Leos with our great tenacity of being, you know, our will being our great tenacity. Um, and also the sun being how, you know, the great creator and how we create. Of course, the fifth, the fifth house is going to symbolize us and how we express ourselves. Naturally, it's occupied by Leo. The fifth house indicates how we focus our creative energy and experience the pleasures of life. This is a house of the sun. So you must learn how to shine on your own. This is where you learn to shine on your own. I remember when I was in the fifth grade, I don't know about any other state, but I was in Florida at a young age, of course, I'm beautifully a 50 year old person so when I was much younger and I was in the fifth grade I believe that's when I began to come into my own in Florida fifth grade is the last grade of early elementary education it's right before you get into what we would consider middle school so at that particular space is when I began to come into who I was and understand how I like to express myself and so the fifth house, again, this is the house of the sun, so you must learn how to shine on your own. This, wherever, wherever, whatever is placed within this house tells how you are creative. It tells how you like to create the things that you are, um, that are on your path. It shows how you shine. It is now time in the fifth house to let your individual personality shine through. Now, in the fourth house, it was about home and family and parenting. You know, that's about being a group. So now in the fifth house, we're like, all right, love y'all. But, you know, it's now time for me to learn on my own, learn who it is that I am. 
So, um, again, it is now time in the fifth house to let your individual personality shine through. This requires that you begin to separate yourself from the family unit. Um, the fifth house rules um, over everything you do for pleasure. It's how you express yourself creatively or creatively. Um, it rules your sexual nature. The most basic creative urge in your psyche is sex. Most people, okay, we're going to get into it. We come into this world as sexual beings. You, if you look at babies, some of y'all babies, you know, be pulling on some of your, your, your baby boys, be pulling when they find that little thing, they start pulling on it. You know, at first they just, you know, playing around like an arm or leg, but then when they really feel whatever energy or power that comes from it, that's where they continue, continuously begin to gravitate toward toward little girls do too we are inherently sexual beings if we begin to learn to teach our our younger kids about their bodies at a younger age when they are older they won't be out here just having sex with everybody trying to get that sexual urge that little thing that they that little feeling that they get or whatever they'll know more about their bodies and they'll know how to preserve their energy their sexual energies and hone them and craft them and use them for the greater good. Sex is a powerful weapon. Y'all y'all looking at the surface of it. Sex is a powerful weapon. Anyway, let's get back into it. It rules your sexual nature. The most basic creative urge in your psyche um, is a large part of its domain is sex. Um, it is a house that expresses your artistic talents as well as your ability to enjoy yourself in life. So whatever is in this fifth house kind of tells if you know how to sit down and relax, you know how to have fun, enjoy yourself or not. Um, in childhood, pets and playmates are a part of this house. It holds sway over all the things to which you instinctively gravitate to and give affection to. Um, this house contains your uneducated child who believes all things. Let me go up a little bit. Okay, let's go back here. It holds sway over all the things to which you instinctively give affection to. This is the house of your heart. The fifth house is the house of your heart. It's the house of the sun. It's the house of Leo. It's the house of your heart. This gravitates to anything that pertains to your heart. So like sometimes I'll ask my partner, how's your heart? Because I want to know, how's her heart? What's going on? How does she feel today? How is she creating or um, expressing herself today? How's your heart? How's your heart? So the fifth house, you know, it's the heart. So this is the heart. This is the house of your heart, the house of children, and the young at heart. The young at heart. This is the house of Leos because they, they are young hearted. You know, they have that child's like um, quality about them or energy within them. And the heart of the child is usually, we'll get into that. I won't go into that yet. Anyway, we'll go into that. Um, the house of children and the young at heart, those who believe in possibilities. Um, this house contains your uneducated childhood beliefs. These are all, the, the belief that all things are possible. Remember that little you who thought you could do anything? Like, They'd be like, he was, you know, he had a strong heart. He'd be doing everything. Kid got heart. Because of the fact that this represents your uneducated, um, your uneducated heart. Now, a lot of times we, we try and put people in school and we begin to see that creative thing within them. We want to throw them in some school. And most often... Putting them in those schools begin to take that creativity that they have and begin to put lines and boxes within it. And that uneducated, raw talent, some people ain't never gone to school. They never tainted or messed with that particular creativity, that heart of them, because it's just a part of who it is that they are. Now, we as parents, when we're bringing up our children, we do one or two things of them. We either um, quelch or just squash their whole little personality. When these little lions come into, into being, even if you're in a family that is not a royal family, they have that, that whole mentality about them. They come into this world this way. So they're going to walk a certain way. They're going to talk a certain way, regardless of everybody else in the family. And sometimes 
you know, we have people in life will say, well, you think that you're better than other people. Well, no, I don't think that I'm better than you. I just think highly of myself and there's never anything wrong with a person thinking highly of themselves or carrying themselves in a royal regal way. They cannot help it. And so you having a problem with that or not celebrating it, even as children, as parents, we we do that to our children. Well, stop acting like that. You acting like, you know, you everything. Well, aren't they? They're your child, you know? So it depends. Again, this is why I'm always speaking from an elevated state of mind. Because if you have a young Leo that you have just squelched their whole little hook, those are not Leos that we want to really, you know, be involved with because they've had some childhood traumas that they need to, you know, heal from. You know, once they heal, they get to that space of, you know, um, evolutionary, whatever it is for them then that's when we can tap into their energy, we as other people. We've got to stop judging people for who they are. These people are just people. They are who they are, and they actually are. Everybody is a reflection of us in some way, shape, or form. I cannot stress that enough. You are me, I'm you, whether you like it or not, and whether I like it or not, we are a part of each other. So that's another one of my rants for today. Um... This house is the house of your heart, the house of children, and the young at heart, those who believe in possibilities. Um, this house contains your uneducated child who believes all things are possible. When you have little children that believe all things are possible, you get down with them on their level and tell them, yes, yeah, shit, it's all, yeah, it's all possible. You know, it is, because it is. We're the only people, adults, who have been, you know, screwed with through life. We don't want to pass that on to them. Um... Air signs in the fifth house suggest creative talents that lie in writing or speaking. Water indicates that we are drawn to music, um, whether playing instruments or singing. When I found this out, I was like, that's why when I was younger, I have a water sign in my fifth house. It's Pisces. But my when I was in sixth grade, I, I started out playing the viola. I went from the viola <laughs> to the bass. I went from the bass and then switched from sprints from strings and went over to band. I played the <laughs> the flute. I tried it all. I wanted to play the drums. So that, that whole music thing. Getting your natal chart done explains to you a lot about yourself. I cannot express that enough. It really does. If you still have not gotten your chart done and you have been watching this every Saturday, I'm going to get you. Like, I'm going to get you. And those, for those of you who are just watching, make sure that you either go to CafeAstrology.com, go to CoStarAstrology.com, or go to Codex, C-O-D-E-X, Astrology.com, the Codex Astrology.com. I'm sorry about that. And so, again, um, whether that's playing instruments or singing, fire signs in the fifth house relates to um, the physical dynamics of arts of dance or acting or sport so again leo is a fixed sign so they're usually actors they're usually um you know like to dance and things of that nature i'm telling you if you really paid attention to certain things about people you will know their sign without even asking them you know you could confirm it afterwards as you said they are leo you know and then ask them and they will tell you yep that's me um, the presence of earth um, points to sculpture and painting or risky hands-on pro um, projects. Now, again, earth signs are, are, are about, you know, doing things with the hand. It's about, you know, earth and um, being grounded. But they do anything or any risky hands-on pro projects as business, as a business entrepreneur as well. So let me just say that again. The presence of earth points to sculpture, painting, risky hands-on projects um, as a business entrepreneur. The fifth house also describes our appetite for pleasure. It reveals our readiness for romance. It describes our typical love affairs and lovers. It indicates our children, what they will be like and how we will treat them or whether we'll have children at all. Um, but it's really about, you know, raising children because raising children is Children is one of the greatest expression. Those, when we say we, those, my mini me, that's what you created. You created you, you know, you created a you. So here it is. You got this little thing you kind of, you know, created and nurtured and, 
you know, give it whatever life that it needs to have because you are not trying to dictate what it should do, but you are seeing who the child is and you're guiding them along that path. Correct? Yes. Good. So, um, it indicates our children, what they'll be like, how we'll treat them, or whether we'll have them at all. Raising children, of course, is one of our greatest expressions of creativity. As in all our highest artistic endeavors, as parents, we create something that is much more than personal self-indulgence. That's the goal. That's the highest thing of being a parent is to not create something that's self-indulgent. Like some, I want you to be like me or I want you to, I want it to be a dancer. And because I'm not a dancer, I'm going to try and turn you into one. That's not the highest form of, of um, creative expression. That's, that's, um, that's not good. It's not good. Um, it's what we bring to the world. Our children are what we bring into the world. Um, in this house, in this house, um, <laughs> in this house, you pass your creative gifts on to your children, which I, I laugh about that because it's so it's so true. I have a young son that grew up with his father, and the funny thing about it is that remember I told you when I was in the sixth grade that I took strings and I took um, band, but at first I was playing the viola. And come to find out when he got in the same grade, he took to the violin. And when the first time I heard him play the violin, I just, I, I lost it. I just lost it. He didn't see me lose it, but I lost it. I was like, that is me. Like that's, you know, and I didn't sway him into that. That's just something that he just gravitated towards. So Trust and believe these are the gifts that you pass on to your children, whether you do anything about it or not. They, it, it's just in the DNA. So anyway, again, today in Life Astrology, we have talked about the sign of Leo. We've talked about the planet of the sun. And of course, we know that the sun is not a planet, but in astrology, we call it a planet. And we've also talked about the fifth house, which is the house of creativity and sex. Now, beginning, I want you guys to really think about the sun and how it's the great creator. Um, this is so important. This even goes into a whole spiritual thing. So if you guys really want to know more, I think on the first video, I put some different books that I have been reading. So you guys check those out. Again, make sure that you get your natal chart. Um, if you want me to walk through your natal chart with me, you guys can either send me a DM if you're watching this on Instagram. Um, if you're watching it on Facebook, send me an instant messenger. If you are watching this on YouTube, then go ahead and just put, you know, in the comments below that basically, you know, you would like to talk about, you know, your natal chart, you would get like to get your natal chart and I'll help you with your natal chart. I will pull it down for you and kind of take a look at it before you and I meet. And then we can talk about where your areas of strength are and then your undeveloped strengths and how to um, work on those areas to maximize who you are as a person. Be light, be love, be peace, people. It's Life Astrology. Thank you so much for, for watching today. Be sure to like, comment. Um, this is just raw. I don't do a whole lot of editing. It's just me. So, you know, there's not lighting, all that, whatever. I just want to bring this to you guys. So if you like it, be sure to share it. Be sure to put comments. Um, if there's something that you have questions about, put your comments in them in the um, comment section. If I don't get to it first and there's some other people who know about astrology, they'll answer, you know, so don't be, this is a community. I love you guys. Peace. I want you to show me how to get to know someone like you, someone like you.